soldiers. We stand on the precipice of a battle that will define our legacy. We've watched our brothers and sisters fall, our homes threatened, and our resolve tested. 200,000 men, 200,000 paths to vengeance, 200,000 ways to make the Strogs regret ever attacking our home. So load your weapons, look to the person next to you, and make peace with whatever gods you believe in. Because today, we put the hell in their own... your bodies. The damn Strogs didn't spare any of them. It's like walking through a graveyard. Okay, get yourselves back together, bitter men. They... Yes, they said to find that comm tower, link up with the orbital fleet. Gotta be more survivors out here. Can't be just me left. Amidst the unstable atmosphere of Strogos, the big gun's onslaught proved devastating for the marine forces. As they descended, the weapons disrupted most of the pod's commands turning them into metal coffins. Of those that did land, most marines were brutally slaughtered by the Strogs, dragged out of their capsules and executed without a second thought. Others were less fortunate, taken prisoner for unknown but certainly grim fate. From the scattered remains of this surprise offensive, only a few names emerged as survivors. Bitterman, Joker, and Stepchild. Initially, Bitterman's mission was to land on the outskirt of the big gun installation with orders to infiltrate and neutralize it. However, things did not go as planned. He lost control of his drop pod and ended up miles away, stranded at an outer defense base well beyond the planned landing zone. Bitterman, of the 101st Spaceborne carried a heavy heart into battle. The Strog's merciless invasion of Earth robbed him of his family. Haunted yet determined, he joined Operation Alien Overlord, setting his sights on the Strog capital, seeking retribution. Operation Overlord aims to dismantle the Strog war machine through a four-pronged approach, establishing a communication link with the orbiting fleet disabling the planetary defense system, destroying the black hole generator, and ultimately assassinating the Macron, the elected leader of the Strog civilization. The Strog functioned through a centralized command system led by the Macron, who is elected from a cadre of warlords, each responsible for a strategic aspect or location within their civilization. While this system provides them with operational efficiency, it also makes them vulnerable. Eliminating the Macron would plunge the Strog into internal chaos and strife, weakening their overall power structure and amplifying the impact of upcoming assaults. Upon landing, the sight of bodies strewn across the ground bore witness to the relentless slaughter unleashed by the Strogs. The disorganized and disoriented Marines had been overwhelmed, caught in a nightmare from which there was no escape. Yet, despite his solitude, Bitterman found a surprisingly clear path to the communication center. It was as if the Strog had underestimated the persistence of human resistance in this remote sector. Thus, the forces deployed here were not of the highest caliber. Most common were Strog guards, unfortunate souls who were once human, presumably captured during the invasion of Earth. These individuals had undergone a gruesome transformation known as Strogification, wherein their brains were subjugated to the will of the Strogs and their bodies augmented with mechanical enhancements. In addition to these guards, enforcers and gunners were also stationed in the area. While not as formidable as some of the Strog's elite units, these warriors were nonetheless not to be taken lightly, especially the gunners, who had a bad habit of lobbing a barrage of grenades, turning them into living arsenals.
Not far from where Bitterman found himself, yet still at a considerable distance, Stepchild crash-landed in the industrial sector of Cerberon. His point of impact was within a vast mining facility, one of the few remaining places on Strogos where resources can still be extracted. Here, the Strogs are focused on mining two key crystals, Stedium and Thalite, both critical to the Strog war machine. The Thalite is used by the Strog for military applications, crafting it into munitions and explosive devices. Conversely, Stedium plays a versatile role within Strog society. Not only does it power a wide array of systems, but it's also a component in rock drilling machines and laser devices. Its aesthetic qualities have even earned it a place as decorative material in prestigious locations, emphasizing its dual importance as both a functional and valuable resource. One notable example of a machine powered by Stedium is the Tectonic Stabilizer. Those colossal marvel of Strog engineering were deployed all over the planet in a layer, designed to temper the environment violent natural tendencies, quelling earthquakes, lava eruptions, and other geological outbursts. Neutralizing it required disabling its Stedium-powered energy supplies and critical cooling components. Disabling all these systems will unleash a wave of geological chaos, a prime chance to land a devastating blow on the Strogs. While Stepchild was initially part of Operation Alien Overlord, his focus is abruptly shifted to confronting a new and formidable Strog threat, the Gravity Well. This colossal device has the capacity to project a potent cone of artificially high gravity into the cosmos. Its primary function, to entrap any ships in orbit around the planet, rendering them unable to escape or retaliate. The urgency is further underscored when we discover the primary objective assigned to another surviving marine, known as Joker. Part of the elite Foxtrot squad, Joker's mission diverges from the original focus of Bitterman and Stepchild. While Operation Overlord is centralized in Cerberon's capital, Joker's agenda unfolds in an unspecified region, still under the protection of the planetary defense system. The primary objective? To locate the hidden Strog counterfleet, a formidable armada gearing up to assail Earth forces. This pivotal detail, the fleet's exact location, remains elusive to command, making it the initial goal of Joker and his team. Of all the arid wastelands on this miserable planet, I just had to luck out and land in a swamp. Go figure. I came across the corpses of some squad members, but their wounds don't look like strong handiwork. Makes me think these laser fences weren't set up just for land demarcation. The Gex, amphibious creatures prone to leaping attacks and spitting acid, they are skilled in swimming, having no qualms diving into the swampy waters to continue their pursuit. Among the heavily industrialized and polluted landscapes of Strogos, the Gex, along with the Barracuda Shark and Mutant, are among the rare remnants of the planet's native fauna. Blocked by the laser fence, Joker has no choice but to navigate through the sewer system in an attempt to reunite with his squad, waiting for him in the outer compound area. To all strongs. We have detected a lone human exiting our comm tower. I am deploying elite forces to secure our critical assets. Under no circumstances, no circumstances, should he make it through the jail complex. Understand this, he is alone. Fail to stop him and you'll face far worse than reprocessing. With Bitterman successfully establishing a communication link between the orbital fleet and the ground forces, 
Phase one of Operation Alien Overlord comes to a close. Standing between him and phase two are miles of Strog-controlled territory, teeming with fortified emplacements, sprawling warehouse complexes, factories and industrial zones. To approach the big gun, a lethal laser field that guards both the weapon and the Strog capital city must first be neutralized. The computer controlling this laser defense is situated in a secure vault, located beneath the jail complex to the south of the big gun. Those metal heads yanked the power supplies to stall me. Command says there are replacements in the same area as a supply train. Perfect. I can hit two birds with one stone. They think this will slow me down. They're in for a surprise. A network of warehouses filled to the brim with military supplies feeds into an intricate train system who distributes essential goods across the many regions of Strogos. After battling his way through enforcers, gunners, and blade-armed berserkers, he finally reached the control room for the supply train. Upon sabotaging the vital supply line, Bitterman comes face to face with a force unlike any he's encountered before, the Strog Tax. These hulking titans, bristling with rocket launchers and chain guns, are not just soldiers, they are war machines. Far more mechanical than biological, their very presence on the battlefield is a harbinger of doom, usually signifying a stronghold or asset of immense importance to the Strog cause. The sight of these mechanical monstrosities signals to Bitterman that he's approaching a critical nexus of Strog power. And as he's about to discover, their deployment here is no coincidence. His next target, the enigmatic Jail Center, is of utmost significance. Home to the computer core that controls the Strog's entire defense grid, this facility also serves as a detention center for human prisoners of war. For Bitterman, this bleak complex is more than just another objective. It's a golden opportunity to gather desperately needed reinforcements and strike a decisive blow against the Strog. prisoners to make a dash for it, to join the fight. But they just stand there, hollow-eyed and broken, mumbling the same phrases over and over again. Make it stop. It hurts. They don't even seem to notice I'm here. Whatever the Strog have done to them, they've shattered something inside these men. Their sanity has been eroded, not merely by captivity, but by calculated and cruel torture. Though they were still breathing, the prisoners were beyond rescue. He couldn't leave them here. He knew Strog reinforcements would flood back into the area soon enough. And with the planet's defense system still operational, evacuation was out of the question. if I hadn't landed in that swamp. I've got to make it to their intelligence center. Can't let my squad's deaths be in vain. I'll make sure of it. The objective remained unchanged. He had to take the data disk to the intelligence center to reveal the location of the counterattack fleet. While they may not appear immediately threatening, appearances can be deceiving. Utilized to store vital information, spread computer viruses, or run specific programs, data disks are crucial tools that were used both during Earth invasion and on Strogos. Stepchild is tasked with acquiring one such disk. Unlike Joker, who intends to use the data disk to uncover essential intelligence, Stepchild's needs to link it with Earth's fleet so they can load it with a specialized virus. Once secured, the Marine is tasked to inject this virus into the Strog's air-to-ground communication network, throwing it into chaos.
The consequences of destroying the Strog stabilizer were unmistakable. Collapsed walls and ceilings testified to the machine's role in maintaining the structural integrity of the Strog facilities. Stepchild finds himself navigating through a similar area that Bitterman had traversed not so long ago. However, the situation has changed significantly as we soon uncover that the facility is now locked with high-level security measures. Additionally, the Strog forces deployed in the area have been significantly upgraded, now boasting much more powerful units such as medics, gladiators and a elite tank commander. But in a stroke of dark fortune, fate intervened. The main gate was blasted open by a crashing drop pod, shot down by a gladiator in mid-air. The pod contained a marine who was supposed to rendezvous with Stepchild. While the details of his mission remained murky, evidence inside the nearby detention block hinted at a potential rescue mission. Although we may never fully understand the importance of those captives, Stepchild seized the opportunity, taking the tank commander's head to gain access to the locked area. Sabotaging the Strog's air-to-ground communication systems would provide a crucial advantage once the big gun is destroyed. Deprived of their primary planetary defense, the Strog would lean on their flying units to intercept Earth's incoming airstrikes. Disrupting their communication channels would throw their aerial defense into chaos, giving Earth's forces a significant edge in executing precise aerial assaults. After squaring off with those tanks, I thought I'd finally have clear access to the system core. Then the walls started flashing and the ground began to shake. Oh. My. God. Bitterman came face to face with one of Strogos' mightiest warrior, the Super Tank. This monstrosity is a heavily armed juggernaut, a veritable fortress on treads. On one side, it features a heavy chain gun, while on the other, a rocket launcher is ready for action. Additionally, grenade launching mechanisms are cleverly integrated into its tracks. In contrast, Joker faced an even grimmer situation. He had to battle not one, but two super tanks both of which were fortified with additional power shields for enhanced durability. Counterfleets on the moon of this godforsaken rock? Great. Well, guess I need to find myself a ride. After Joker discovered that the counterfleet was stationed on Strogos' moon, and Stepchild successfully disrupted the Strog's air-to-ground communication systems, all eyes turned to Bitterman. He had managed to disable the defense grid protecting the big gun, opening a vital window of opportunity. Now, the onus falls squarely on him to pave the way for Earth's military to finally utilize a previously unusable asset, the airstrike markers. Placing these markers at key locations will provide exact coordinates for targeted strikes from Earth's air forces. But before any of that can happen, the big gun must be rendered inoperative. Seal off the mine entrance immediately. Reinforce the research hangars. Guardian, you're reassigned to protect the big gun. I'll tolerate no further failures. Bitterman found himself at the heart of the industrial complex, a sprawling labyrinth of destruction and decay. The complex was a hub of strog activity, featuring mine entrances, factories, and processing plants. Most crucially, it offered a route to the planetary defense system. 
The mines themselves stood as a bleak testament to the Strog's insatiable greed. Overexploited and barren, the upper levels had been stripped of their precious crystals, leaving only the deeper recesses with any remaining deposits. To venture deeper was to face not just the Strogs, but also the mutants that had infested the lower levels, doubling the hazards that lurked within. The mine was sprawling, extending far to the west of Cerberon, even harboring the rare thalite mineral in its deeper regions. Further to the north, closer to the big gun, was the power plant. Taking it out could cripple the Strog's operations, as it served as the lifeblood for multiple facilities in and around Cerberon. But before setting sights on that objective, there was another, more disturbing place to confront, the factory. Here, in this nightmarish hub of the industrial complex, Bitterman would face the pinnacle of Strog malevolence. As I walked through the facility, the stench hit me like a wall. Burned hair and rotting flesh. At first, I thought it might be animal remains, some twisted strog experiment. But then I saw it. Human body parts. Arms, legs, heads, strewn about like discarded trash. And then I saw them. Marines, my brothers in arms in the throes of a machine designed to crush life itself, reducing them to a liquid pulp. I need to stop this nightmare. Here, he encounters the nauseating truth behind Stroyant production, a chemical so vile, it's made from the macerated remains of their victims and fallen comrades. It wasn't just food. It was the fuel that powered their entire society. Their biotech vehicles, their sentry devices, their weaponry, their ammunition. In this abysmal factory, the living and the dead are doomed to share the same fate. The Strog use their captives for a variety of cruel purposes and do not hesitate to extinguish any form of defiance. It's no mystery why they would prioritize fresh specimens over decomposing ones. The deteriorating post-mortem cells and tissues offer an inferior yield as nutrients quickly vanish or get gobbled up by microorganisms. Furthermore, maintaining them alive and imprisoning them provides the Strog with the option to send these captives to several other locations for varying objectives. Those who are spared and not immediately used are transferred to the prison system, where they are mentally and psychically tortured until their minds shatter into nothingness. This guarantees that when they are finally forced through the process, they will put up little to no fight making this unspeakable operation quicker. All this pain and suffering, just to end up as their damn food? No more. Think they're superior? That we're expendable? I'll show these bastards what humans are really made of. until I see the Macron's head severed from his body. For my brothers. For my family. <laughs> 